and pick the industry's top stock and options trading experts to join us today. They have agreed to share their most consistent and profitable trading strategies with us in a free online educational forum. Today's show is packed with great information and discounted special offers, so let's get started. You may have seen our first presenter on Fox News, Fox Business Network, RT America, Cheddar TV, or CBS News. She is an expert stock market analyst and the founder and owner of an international educational company where she teaches people how to successfully trade the stock market. Her trading methodology is based on one strategy called Golden Gaps, which pinpoints institutional money in the stock market. Here to present trade on the side of institutional money in gaps is Melissa Armo of the Stock Swoosh. Welcome back to Traders Corner, Melissa. Good morning, Anthony. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Wonderful. Nice to be here today. Welcome, everyone. I think I have till 12 o'clock. Is that correct, Anthony? Yes, you do. Wonderful. I will try to watch the clock as I go. Thanks for being here, everyone. Good morning. It's a rainy day here in New York City. That's where I live. And like Anthony said, it is going to be an amazing year to trade. So far, even the last three and a half months, even the last three days, you have seen the volatility in the market and you know that there's a lot of opportunity out there. It's just that a lot of people don't know what to do. So again, I've been trading for 16 years. It's hard to believe. I can't even believe it myself, actually, but it feels like I've traded forever, but I really didn't. This is like my second life here because I used to do mortgages and I did that for a long time and I had an unlimited amount of money that I could make with what I did with that career. And the reason that I got into trading was things changed. And if you're at a point in your life or your career where you want to do something different, you might want to learn how to trade the stock market. Actually, the nice thing about trading is you can trade and transition into this career. And I did that myself. I worked two jobs. I traded and did my full time job while I transitioned to trading. And again, the stock market's open five days a week. You could trade two days a week, three days a week. You could do options. You could be in the trading room with me until you make enough money that you prove to yourself, I can do this, and you want to release whatever you're doing and quit your job and then move into trading. So we're going to talk about today about shorting, which is a great topic because of where the market sold off on Friday. We're going to talk about gaps, and we're going to talk about institutional money as well. If you have questions, you can plop it in the room and let me know. As Anthony said, I appear on TV. I actually was on a new channel this week. There's like a new channel popping up every week, it seems. Dr. Phil has a channel now. It's on my it's on my television. So I'm always out there. I'm always talking. I'm talking about the stock market. I'm talking about the economy. If you have questions, you can email me at melissathestockswish.com. You can also call me at 929-3200-GAP. And you can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. I always try to post uh, training room videos or replays or anything that I'm talking about, even videos of Central Park. I live along the park. I try to post on YouTube, people can follow along. And one of the nice things, again, about trading for a career and why I decided I wanted to do this is because I wanted to work for myself. I wanted to be in control of my own destiny. And when the mortgage industry changed, it was no fault of my own. It was the industry changed. And again, I wanted to be in control of my own career, my own money, and my own life. And that is the nice thing, again, about trading. So if you're at a point where you don't love what you do, it's tough. It's hard. People live for the weekends, but there's seven days in a week, not just two. You've got to love what you do for a living. Because if you don't, you're going to spend hours and hours and days and weeks and months and years doing something that you hate. If you hate your job, and you're going to spend a long time doing it. And the quality of your life goes down when you're getting up every day and you really don't want to go to your job. But again, I'm speaking from experience because this is how it was like the last two years before I got out of the mortgage industry and before I got out of banking. So I knew I had to do something different, but I didn't know what it was. And then I found out about the stock market. It was just in a whim. I met somebody in New York and then I just, I said, oh my God, I can do this thing. Of course, I didn't know at the time that I had to learn how to trade. I didn't know anything about strategies. I didn't know anything about shorting. I knew nothing about anything at all. And if you're someone that's out there, you always just assume that, well, you have to live in New York and you go to Wall Street and you go to the NASDAQ and you can trade. That's not true. You can trade from anywhere in the world by yourself. All you need is live charts and a brokerage account and you can do it. And today we're going to talk about options and day trades as well. But if your year is not on track where you want to be, again, spring is a nice time. It's spring here in New York City. That's why we're getting so much rain. Uh, it's a good time to kind of recap 
it's good to do them on the weekends too. You know, again, April 15th tax day is Monday here in the United States. It's a good time to kind of do a reset. Are you having a good year so far? Or could it be better? Are you having a bad year? And what can you do to make changes? I found that people that are trading for years, sometimes longer than I'm alive, get so stuck in a rut of something that they're doing with their trading or some kind of indicator that they don't want to change what they're doing. They may even know that that thing doesn't work. They're losing money using whatever system they're using or indicator. It doesn't work, but they just, they're so stuck on it. You have to change what you're doing if you're not making the money you want to make. That's the only reason you're going to get somewhere in the future where you want to be. And again, the future could be two weeks from now, one month from now, could be Monday. So I put the stats in here. This doesn't have the last couple of days, actually. Um, 309,190 so far year to date. Again, I didn't have this week in here. Um, we did JPM on Friday. I do have the chart in here. And then the options newsletter, we're having a phenomenal year. And again, I risk more of my options trades, but 880,580 for options. So our win ratio, and this is very, very important for the year with all the trades I've called in the room and the options newsletter, everything I've done is 71%, which is good. So you figure if every 10 trades you take with me, seven are gonna work and be winners and three are gonna be losers. And again, so far this year, we're on pace. And again, this is with a $3,000 average risk for the day trades and an $8,000 average risk for options. You can risk more, you can risk less. We're on pace, it's only three and a half months into the year. Again, April 15th is Monday, over a million for the year. So we're having a good year. Part of the reason the opportunities are there, part of the reason is the volatility is there. And again, volatility is your friend if you're a day trader, if you're an active trader. And I consider myself a day trader, even though I'm doing options and I'm holding trades overnight, I'm doing the weekly options. Like I'm in options out to the 19th. So that, that's not a long time for me. I consider myself an active trader where I'm taking a trade, getting the move, getting in, get out and what I call chunking it out. But let's talk about what I was saying about having a big year. If you're not having a big year so far, you still have plenty of time left to change what you're doing. You have eight and a half months left in the year to fix whatever you're doing if you're not on pace. So I always tell people, get positive. Get a positive mindset if you wanna be at that next level and you really wanna do something called level up. I don't know if you ever heard of this term. What does level up mean? It means to improve your current station in a way that feels like a powerful shift. You're gonna do something different. It starts by a change in thought, a shift in mindset followed by brave action. And taking trades and risking money in the market is actually a brave thing to do. Not everybody is cut out to do this and not everybody wants to do this. For example, my sister has no interest in trading. She will never trade in her life. She doesn't have any interest in this. So it's brave when you take a trade and take risk. But again, you have to have a reason for taking the train. And you have to think that you're going to be successful, believe that you're going to be successful. Again, I've been doing this for 16 years. When I started out, I thought it was going to make a lot of money right away really quick in like the first month. It didn't turn out that way. It didn't. It took me three years to figure out the strategy that I'm doing now. But once I did, I never looked back. Again, you can turn things around in a moment, in a second, in a day. If you just change your attitude and find one good strategy to do. So this idea of leveling up, it really just applies to everything in our life. It's not just trading, but we're going to talk today about trading. It's everything. It's cleaning out the old, old bringing in the new. Um, I took this picture. Actually, look at it. It doesn't even it looks like a professional postcard photo. This is this is New York at Central Park. And again, I'm so blessed to be able to have the lifestyle that I have today, but I worked very, very, very hard to get to this point. Because as I said, it took me three years to figure out this, the strategy that I do now that we're gonna talk about today that, that I'm able to be successful. But once I figured it out, I never looked back. So many times people are so stuck in what they're doing, they just can't see forward. And especially if they've been losing money trading for a long time, they feel like they're never gonna get it, but they still trade every day and they still lose money every week or month or year. If you really have been bitten by the market bug and you really believe you can do it, don't give up. Change your attitude, get a positive attitude and change what you're doing and do something new because it's really the American dream to become rich, successful and financially independent. And the thing is, you gotta have a plan of action to make that happen. And trading may be it. Trading may be the vehicle for you. Because again, as Anthony said, we're in a time of high inflation. We're in a time of high interest rates. You're not gonna be able to change anything that happens with interest rates, the economy, or anything else. You can't control those things, but you can have more money coming in. Even if you have a job, people, this is years ago when I used to work for the banks that I worked for, we used to get an annual review and we get you know a three, 4% raise. 
that's not even happening anymore. And, and even if you're, if you're able to get a 3% bump every year over year, it's not even covering the cost of living of the increases in housing, gas, and food. So you have to find a way to have more money coming in. One of the reasons I like trading is because again, once you have a set strategy, all you do to make more money then is plop on the size. When I started trading, I was using an average risk of $150 per trade was my risk. Now, again, I've increased my risk. Your risk depends on your knowledge base, how much you know, and the size of cash in your account. So where do you start? How do you figure it out? How do you do it? You've got to determine who is in control, who is in control. So in this chart here, who's in control in this chart, this is a chart of NVIDIA, the bulls, the bulls are in control, okay? So basically in this chart here, I'm going back to the beginning of the year. Again, it's hard to believe <laughs> this was January, NVIDIA started out the year in the 400s. NVIDIA has, is, a, is a bullish chart, okay? Even after the sell-off on Friday, NVIDIA is still strong, still in the uptrend. Who's in control of NVIDIA? The bulls, okay? So again, you would have wanted to be long NVIDIA in order to make money here on this run up at any point in the year. And we did have multiple trades. We did in NVIDIA. We were doing options. We were doing calls. Here's another chart here. This is who is in control of the bears or of BA, the bears. Okay, so the shorts are in control here of BA. This has been selling off like a hot cake. Literally, you could have shorted BA every single day in the month of April. Boom, 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 boom. The stock has just been absolutely tanking. Again, this is Friday. Stock fell with the overall market. It broke 170. Again, this is BA. So who is in control of BA? The bears. Okay, the shorts are in control of BA. But every time I'm trying to figure out what I want to trade, what direction I want to trade it, I look and I say, who is in control? Okay, institutional money is always, always in control. Even if you think it's not, it is. Okay, institutional money is in charge of the market and stocks at all times. Even if you think it's not, it is. And this is what this is where people get tripped up that are trading and they get and they get frustrated. They say, "Well, wait a minute! I thought this was going to rally and I'm going to buy the dip in the market." And that's what everybody did on Thursday. I didn't do it. It didn't work. We were short. Okay, it worked. Not understanding the importance of institutional money in the market is a classic mistake many traders make to their detriment. Okay, if you don't know how to read institutional money in a stock chart, you're missing out on a vital piece of information that can help you succeed. You're trading impaired, okay, if you don't see who is really in control of the price action, because that is what you need in order to take a trade. This was a big sell-off that Tesla had. Uh, this was not this past Friday, but the Friday before. This is a 15-minute in Tesla. It sold off like a hot cake. I don't even remember why this was. I think it was news or something. Tesla was here. You see it right around 169 and change and then dropped. Boom. Fell almost $10 all the way down. Again, this sold off. So you would have wanted to be short and we were short. Okay. This is a big sell off here. This happened during the live day. This was around 11 o'clock on Friday, April 5th. Okay. So again, institutional money did what here? Boom. Sold it. Dumped it. And it fell. So you determine who is in control and then you need to focus which is the strategy. So my focus is gaps. And again, specifically shorting, like I said. So let's talk about the basics of what is a gap. A stop gap from the opening price today is different than the closing price of yesterday's trading. A gap is a break in price action from one day to the next, okay? Here's another one we did. I actually did a put in this and I shorted it and I didn't hold the put, I wish I had. This was an insane, insane, insane trade actually if you held the put. Stock close here, gap down. This is INTC. This was the day we shorted it, and I did the put and I got out. But actually, you could have stayed with the trade and it kept going, which was really, really crazy. But this fell. Again, who's in control of INTC? The bears. And again, what is a gap? The stock closed here at one price at 4 o'clock Eastern time around 43 and change and opened at 930 the next day at 41 and change. And then I rate it, I go through my process, I rate it, I determine if it's gonna be a short or a long, and I say, oh, it's gonna be a short. And then once the stock opens, I short it, or you can buy a put. Now a put is a short in an option. We buy puts and sell them, or we buy calls and sell them. That's what we did with NVIDIA when we played it long. NVIDIA is very expensive. It's even expensive to do as an option, but certainly a lot less expensive than just buying it outright at the price that it's been all year. But what do I do with the gap? Again, I rate it. So if you decided you wanted to come and learn my strategy and do my class, you would learn my rating system. It's a 26 point checklist. I rate it to determine the stock's direction. And again, I have this all figured out ahead of time. I know everything I'm doing ahead of time. I knew I was doing JPM in the morning before 930. 
So that's how I know, which I figure it out, all in the pre-market, okay? And then again, I wait when the market opens and take the trade when it sets up. Having the, all of this organized ahead of time also takes the, takes the weight off, I guess, of the stress of actually trying to figure out what to do in the live day. <laughs> because if you're scanning, scanning, scanning in the morning, you know, for the first 5, 10, 15 minutes or half an hour, trying to figure out what the market's going to do, trying to get a trade with the market, you know, you're back and forth and you don't have high odds of getting something right. It takes the stress out of it by having everything figured out ahead of time, whether I like a trade, whether I don't like a trade, or whether I'm doing nothing, you know, that day. But the purpose of the rating system is to help me determine who is in control, who is in control. Again, who is in control of BA right now, like I said, it's been the bears. But when you think about it, it just makes perfect sense. You're like, oh my God, this makes perfect sense. I totally get it. You go with the control factor. And then once you understand that and wrap your head around it, you say, wow, it's not that hard to make money. I just have to figure out who's going to be in control. And this isn't the overall trend. This is in control of the day. Like we shorted JPM, like I said, on Friday, JPM is still in an uptrend. That hasn't flipped. But on that particular day, on Friday, the day that it fell, the bears were in control on that day. Okay. Any questions here? as we're going along. Somebody's asking about a replay. Anthony can answer that later. Uh, let's talk about options. So here is Tesla. So if you decide you want to get my options trades, this is a newsletter. So in the live trading room, I do day trades on margin. The options newsletter is a subscription service. Again, this is a service you get the newsletters live. This is what they look like. I give you the symbol strike expiration date and then whether we're doing a put or a call. So on 3.5, I called the 180 Tesla puts. Let's take a look at it. 3.5. Here we are. 3.5. So again, stock close here, gap down. Again, take it over here. It was around 180. Get the drop. Boom. You see where the stock fell. Boom. And again, this was a 3.15 expiration. So sometimes I will do it and get in and out the same day. Sometimes it keeps, takes a little couple of days to go. Like I got out of the INTC the day that I did it. But anyways, this was not crazy expensive, but we did the four fifth, of the, we did the 180s that cost 450. It was 100% return on investment. We got in, got out. Again, I'm trading momentum. So if I'm, if I'm buying a put in Tesla, I'm saying I believe that Tesla is going to drop. I believe Tesla is lower. And it was, and it's got to happen. The momentum has to happen in the stock within the week I'm doing the trade for options. It's extremely important for options, not only to get the direction right, but you got to get a big move. Otherwise, you can't get paid. And again, if you want to take a smaller risk, you could do one. You could have spent $450 and you know, one contract and flipped it around one to one, which is a good, good return on investment for the actual, actual trade. Somebody, does my service include the checklist? The Golden Gap course that I teach is a two-day class. The class for April, we'll go over this at the end, is April 27th to 28th. That class is $69.99, $6,999. That class, you will learn the checklist. If you're talking about the newsletter, the newsletter is a separate subscription service. That's not a class. This is, you could sign up today and get the trades for Monday kind of thing. Uh, some people on the newsletter haven't done the class. Some people have not. I am doing a spring special. We'll talk about later at the end, whoever asked this question um we'll talk about it at the end of this uh where are we okay here we go and again i can see questions you can keep asking questions if you want there's only one thing and one thing only that can move the direction of a stock and it's money not a little bit of money but a lot of money again you can't get a stock like tesla to drop ten dollars in 15 minutes without institutional money they're dumped they dumped their shares you could say well they sold it they shorted it it doesn't matter it's the stock dropped so again who's in control it's power money power money's in charge power money's in charge of the stock's direction and the overall market trends are set and moved by the power money people and guess what of which there's a lot of in the market there's a lot of them in the market so the 26 point checklist is what i go through in the morning and i read it I get up at six o'clock in the morning. You can get up at seven, eight. I give yourself a half an hour, an hour, so you don't have to rush to take time to go through and figure out what you want to do. Earnings season officially started on Friday. We had the some of the banks reported again. This is a big week to trade. Next week's a big week to trade. The re, the next six weeks it's earnings season. There's going to be a million gaps. And it's going to be a million things to rate. Now, I prefer to do one trade at a time, sometimes two. You can see that from the first, the beginning stats. 
but you essentially could trade anything and everything that rates good if you want to on any particular day. So I rated JPM in the morning. I liked it. I had a feeling, I don't trade on feelings, but I had a feeling this was going to be down on Friday. I'm not going to get into reasons for that here, but the fact is I waited to see what the earnings were going to show for the gap. It could have gapped up. It could have made new highs. It could have fallen off a cliff. It did the latter. So here was, again, JPM. Is this one of the reasons the market fell? Yes. Yes, it was. JPM is a leading bank and it tanked. So stock closed up here around 195 on Thursday evening. The earnings were Friday morning. Stock opened here around 188, opened, rallied, boom, fell. I did not get this whole thing. I got in and out early. I actually went on a tour of Central Park yesterday before the rain. And that's, again, is a nice thing about trading. You get out fast, you can hold all day, you can do whatever you want. I like to trade quick and fast and be done in the morning. But you could have held this. It almost went to the dream target, which would have been 180. Again, a ridiculous move. Ridiculous move. But again, the market fell, which also was good too. But the reigning system, it tells me where the momentum is headed. Then you play it in the direction, again, of the institutional money. We've been doing Tesla. Tesla has been another big one. Tesla earnings are coming out. I have to look at the date for that too. Again, earnings season is an optimal time to trade if you're an active trader, whether you're doing options or day trades, because you get big moves. Why? Because everybody that owns a stock is watching at the day of the earnings. Again, I have no problem going long, but I do prefer to short. <coughs> and one of the reasons I prefer to short is because selling comes in faster than buying, with the exception of NVIDIA. I mean, you get sometimes something called panic buying, but it's so, 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 so rare. You did really have that panic buying, though, in NVIDIA this year since January. And then when it hit up, boom, and almost went to 1,000. It was really, really crazy. <laughs> but that's really rare. Mostly you get panic selling, which, of course, you can short against. And, I, and again, for some reason, I don't know why most traders tend to prefer to go long. And a lot of traders have been trading futures and just buying every dip since the, the end of last year. That is all gone. I mean, I can tell you right now, retail traders that were buying the dip in the last week got killed, killed. And it's just, it hasn't, it's not something that always works all the time unless the market's power trending to begin with. And again, I wouldn't even say the market's been power trending since November. It's been rallying, but not every buy, dip that you bought since even October, November worked. And it certainly didn't work this week and people lost money. So again, what I do has nothing to do with the market, but I do look at the market to see if I should hold something longer or something. But overall, I am looking at the gap. And sometimes I train the market if the market gaps. Like you could have shorted the market on Friday. But anyways, trading isn't gambling. A lot of people, they go into the market. They said, well, I have a 50-50 chance of working or failing. That's just not good odds. You probably have better odds, actually, if you go to Las Vegas or count cards. You have to put the odds in your favor. And that's what makes this worthwhile. And certainly something that you want to rely on for income. If, you're, if your odds are 50-50, those aren't really good odds if this is something that you're going to use to pay your bills. So I'm always looking for something to do that's going to give me high odds. So why did I decide to do gaps? Because gaps are the most powerful show of price action in a chart. Gaps have large moves. And again, as an individual trader, if you short a stock and you have 1,000 shares and it drops a dollar, you're going to make $1,000. If you short a stock and it drops a dollar and you have 5,000 shares, what are you going to make? $5,000. So I want a big move. And then I plop on the size. Again, it could move $2, $3. JPM moved $6 plus. That's insane. You could have shorted that into the open, shorted that with 1,000 shares into the open and made over seven grand. Just held it into the close. Literally. Got out before four. Boom. I didn't, I didn't do that because I told you I got out in the morning. But that's something you could have done. Now, gaps can move up or down, and some of the biggest momentum moves in a daily chart come from a gap, aka JPM, INTC, every one that I'm showing you here. The most powerful gaps are created, though, with institutional money, and those are the ones that we want to do. So again, I was saying this earlier. My class is where I teach the 26 points. <laughs> my class is where I teach the entries and the exits. The benefit of being in my live trading room every day is I'm calling the trades for you like I call the JPM. So if you're on a learning curve, <coughs> excuse me, if you're on a learning curve, you can follow me in the room, take the trades and make money as you're going along. <coughs> I don't know why I'm coughing. I wonder if my allergies of pollen starting to get to me with the spring. Anyways, you can follow me while you're trading with me in the room. And so again, sometimes people get everything right away, 100%. Sometimes people... Take some time to understand what to do. 
being in the room, you can ask me questions. You also can get the trades. Again, whether you do day trades or options is totally up to you and the type of account that you have set up at the broker. Any other questions here so far? Again, I have to update the stops from the last week, but I just, I just picked a week here in March. This was all the trades we did for this whole week. This was an average risk of 3,000 per trade. 16,081 was the profits. So let's go over them. This was March 11th. We shorted BA. So in the room, I'm calling the trade. 193.80 was the entry. Here was the exit. It kept going. Again, I told you I like to get out fast. It doesn't matter to me. It's just a good habit, I think, because once you get out quickly, you don't have to worry about economic data, the Fed talking about it, <laughs> any White House press conferences, nothing that's going to screw up your trade. But this was BA, March 11th. Stock close here dropped. See it? It actually kept going. But I got out way before down here, but I want to show you it came all the way down to 190. But I got the first drop, got out, done, boom. So this is a nice trade. And again, I'm looking to turn over my money one to one. Then we did BA again on the 12th. I have to look up the BA earnings. We shorted it at 187.45, got out at 185.58. Again, here's what I risk. Here's where I got out with the profit. Again, got in, got the drop, got out, done. This is what I call the money move, where you're in and out very, very fast. Then we did DLTR. This was another gap we did. This was earnings. Stock closed up here the night before around 150 and change. You can see it. And then gap down here in the morning, way, way down around one in the 120s, 128 and change, I think it was. We shorted it, got in, got out, was done. Then we did Tesla. Been talking about that one, how we've been doing that so much lately, it feels like. Uh, 166.80, we did an ad in that at 70. Average price was 166.75, then we got out. Again, 27.30, this was a nice trade too. Here's the drop. Again, this is what? This is a sell-off. Who's in control of Tesla on this particular day? The bears, the bears. You wouldn't have made money if you went long here on this day in Tesla. You wouldn't have made money if you went long on JPM on Friday. You wouldn't have made money if you went long BA any of these days that we're talking about that I have in here. And then we did Apple for a quick one. Entry was 171.40. This was on the 15th, we shorted it here. I did an add in here and it was a little baby move, but I plopped on the size, really plopped on the size in here and made 53.90. Now you could have bought a put. Again, if you don't have a margin account, you can buy a put. And again, I am doing puts too, but I'm holding my options for longer. I'm not getting in and out of an options trade in five, 10 minutes here. I'm taking the trades on margin. You can open up a prop account as a margin account, you can open up a retail account as a margin account. You can open up an options account with as little as $2,000 at a retail broker and buy puts. You can buy one put, okay? So again, good, good numbers here. I just try to do one thing a day. You could have done everything on Friday. You literally could have shorted a million things on Friday if you wanted to and got them all down, got out fast, held them into the close. I thought it was easier. We were ready in options. We were ready in options that I had previously called for the Friday sell-off because my expectation was that we were lower. Um, and it's funny, I, taught, I did a webinar Wednesday and we sold off Wednesday and then Thursday we flipped and Wednesday I said we were lower. Then Thursday we flipped, I was in trades, the trades flipped around, they were down and then Friday they went. So this is one of the reasons why people are getting tripped up in this market. You have to know what you're doing in this market. You have to know what you're doing in any market, but in this market, you really gotta know what you're doing. Because again, if you don't, you're gonna get whipsawed around. If you, if you don't know what you're doing, you're going to change your mind every second. You're going to take a trade. You're going to be up a little. Then you're going to think it's going to go. Then it's going to reverse against you. Then you're going to kill it. Then it's going to go. Then you're going to take it. Then you're going to go long. Then you're going to go short. All of that nonsense is nothing that I do. You can go back and look at the stats. When I take a trade, if the trade loses, I, it just goes bust for me in the option. Like I'll hold it into Friday if it never, ever goes right. If it goes positive, I get out of it. But I mean, you have to have something that I call, it's called 100% conviction. You either have 100% conviction or you don't. And if you don't, why are you risking your money? Whether it's $100, $1,000, or 10 grand in an options trade, I don't care. You, you have to believe that the trade is going to work. Um, someone is asking something. Um, hold on, let me go back. Can everybody hear me? I just heard a little blip. I don't know if I lost the internet or if that was my charts going flipped out. Can everybody hear me? Hello? 
Um, does my service include my checklist? I answer that. Are your options trades the nearest to the expiration date, usually? Isn't it hard getting any out of options in the morning earnings plates? No. Can everybody hear me? Do I have, do I have uh, internet or did I lose it? Is everybody there? Yeah, we can hear you. Thank you so much. Yeah, I think I just did have, because I had my charts up and I could hear that noise. It dinged me out. We're having a storm here. Thanks for just letting That's, me know. Yeah, I figured maybe you're using Bluetooth or something. Thank you, Melissa. We yeah. appreciate okay, it. Okay, good. <laughs> Actually, that, that, ha that happened the other day when we had the storm, but you guys are here, so that's good. I think I answered all your questions. Is it hard to get in and out of earnings plays? No. No, whoever asked that. Everything we're doing has volume. I'm not doing things that don't have any volume. I'm not doing penny stocks. I'm not doing options that don't have any volume. So you got to trade stocks with volume to get filled. And again, I'm only trading between 930 and 4. I'm not trading in the post and pre-market. You can't do options in the post and pre-market. And I'm not trading after hours on margin. So no, we're trading things that you would know, companies you know. Any, any other questions here? You can put them in the room. Looks like we're good here with the internet but anyways the bottom line is there's more to life than work i just told you i got out of that trade yesterday and i went on a tour in the park i looked at the cherry blossoms it was a central park tour i don't want to trade i don't want to work 50 hours a week anymore i just don't want to do it and you know i used to work that more than that actually when i was doing mortgages so it is it, it may be work to try to figure out how to trade it may be work because you might have to take a bunch of classes so you find somebody that knows what they're doing. You may have to spend money. You may have taken trades and lost. You may be doing this for years. I'm telling you, it's worth the time and effort and energy and money to become a successful trader because once you make it happen, whenever that magical moment or day is in your life that it happens, you absolutely will never regret continuing to do it and you will have the quality of and type of life that you want. Again, everybody wants guarantees. There's no guarantees in the market. People were long on Thursday. They had 100% conviction the market was going to make new highs Friday. It didn't happen. Who would have known what the JPM earnings were? Again, I didn't trade it until I saw it, but I had a feeling. But the bottom line is that if you want a guarantee, if you quit, you definitely won't make it. That's your guarantee. So if you really want to do this, if this is something you want to do, then guess what? Don't quit. So many people continue to trade and they really don't have their whole heart into it. Okay, you have to really, really be focused. And again, it's gonna cost money and time and energy and effort. But if you fast forward six months from now, six weeks from now, you're, you know, you're gonna be in a better place if you just start to do it. Instead of being down about the fact that you have to put this work and time and money and energy into it, you say, wait a minute, this is really exciting. This is something exciting to do. I'm excited that I can figure this out and do it and I'm gonna learn it from Melissa and this is gonna be a whole new beginning for me. And that's a good way to look at it. But anyways, why do I prefer to short? Because of fear, panic, all of the things, like I said, and the sell-off happens quick. I wouldn't be surprised at all if we're down on Monday. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see, but I wouldn't be surprised. Again, everyone's panicking. What are they going to do? They're going to not going to lower rates this year. What's going to happen? Oh, my goodness. And you see, you see, again, all the economic data that came out in the past week. But why do I prefer to short? Shorting gives me an edge. Why? Most traders go long. Few traders know how to short. Also, selling comes in fast, unlike buying. Hence the fear and panic situation. Institutional money sells and takes short positions and stocks in the market. That's what you're going to see. And again, it, this isn't about the trend. You're invested in long-term stuff right now. The market, I'm not saying the market breaks the trend this year. I'm not saying that it could. I don't know. But there's a lot of overlaying factors right now, not just interest rates, fears of a recession, and also world wars going on. There's just so many things right now that if you don't know how to short, you're absolutely going to miss out. You're totally missing the boat if you don't know how to short the stock market or stocks this year in 2024. You're already missing out if you don't understand how to do it and know how to do it. Gone are the days where you could just follow Apple and do whatever Apple does and make money in the market. Those days are gone. I've been saying NVIDIA is a new Apple, but it really not even when you look at actually the last two days. And again, just trading the market every single day, you're going to get whipsaws. The market is still in a range. Yes, we sold off Friday, but we are still in a tight, tight range. This was, oh, this was the fourth. Remember that? That's, this was uh, like two weeks ago, a week and a half ago, um, April 4th. Remember this? 
Like, I don't know if anybody remembers this. Look at this. The market sold off like a hot cake. Again, take it over. This was around 523 and change. This was April 4th. It's a 15 minute of the spy. Look at what it did. It was around 523, fell $10. This was around 12 o'clock in the afternoon, fell into the close here. Look at that. And again, four hours is fast, people. Fast, fast, fast. You had a massive sell off that came in on April 4th in the spy. And again, it was a sell off, it was a dump. Short moves, moves to the downside happen fast and quick, and they can happen big. Again, it's, it was just a nice one, the same thing with JPM. Uh, this was another BA we did. This was 311 that expired on the 15th. This was so cheap, though. We did the 145s. 140, I mean, it cost 145, and it, and it went really, 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 really big. Again, you could have done BA on Monday and held it into Friday, which was insane. Uh, this was 383%, 33,300 profit with an $8,700 risk. And if you risked 1160, you could have made 4440. Let's look at the chart here. This was 311, the 190s. Again, you could, have, you could have done the same thing this week. You could have done the exact same thing this week with this. Stock close here, gap down, open, dropped, boom, fell. Again, we did the 190s. You see where it went. Again, what was Monday? Monday was a fifth. You could have done the 185s here. And look, boop, fell $15, $16. Again, how do you make money in the market? You got to get the direction right. That's 101, trading 101, but you also have to get momentum. You have to get momentum. This is momentum. You may say, well, every bar looks like a baby. It doesn't matter. It kept going. It kept selling off. And again, if you're, if you're looking to watch, well, what's the Fed going to do? They change their minds every month. Yeah, it's just kind of like crazy. So if you're relying on economic data or even fundamentals to make decisions, you're not going to do very well. And again, the whole thing is they said, oh, you know, we're going to lower rates seven times this year, five times this year, three times this year. Now everyone in Bloomberg Friday, they were saying, well, maybe they're going to raise rates this year. That would really put panic in the market because no one at the beginning of the year in January, even December of last year, thought that would happen. So again, now they're back talking about a recession again. Who knows? Nobody knows, but you know that you have to take care of your own money. You know you gotta make money every single day and every single week that you can in the stock market if you're actively trading. All you need to worry about is yourself. Thinking about the future and what's gonna happen and trying to predict the data or what these people are saying or decisions they make has nothing to do with you. And they don't care about the little guy. They really don't. These people are ultra, ultra, ultra rich, okay? So they're making decisions that benefit them. You must weigh the pros and cons every time you take a trade, but you must also put the odds in your favor because there's no guarantees. And that's why you need a system that has high odds. But again, if you come and decide to learn from me, you're going to learn the 26 points, the rating system. It's a checklist. It's a plan of action. Everyone that puts money into the market should have a plan of action and checklist. On a professional level, all high income career field specialists have checklists. I'm looking for the direction. I'm looking for the institutional money. Again, I told you that I prefer to short. But I also am trying to work smarter, not harder, where I'm trying to get stocks that are going to have the biggest moves. That's why I trade the high flyers like Tesla, BA, Apple, JPM. And I also want to try to get out fast, you know, because, again, I don't want to be sitting stuck at the computer all day long. But a big flow of money going a certain direction is really what moves markets. It's what moves stocks. And you want to be on the side of this power of money to make money trading. So how do I figure it out? How do I know how to have time? I'm not predicting the gap. I had a feeling about JPM, but I didn't play it until I saw it in the morning, and then I rated the gap. So if you come and you take my class, you will learn the 26-point checklist. This checklist tells me what to trade and what to look for each day, because institutional money is creating the momentum in the gap. Again, it could be buying, it could be selling. I told you I prefer to short, but I will go long. NVIDIA has been a nice long for us this year. I am not long that stock right now, though, I'll tell you that. But understanding which gaps are meaningful and which gaps are not meaningful in the market will help you to know what to do and when a change is occurring. And that's how you know when the power of money is going to float with you. So every day I'm looking for stocks to trade that have, number one, a high probability of directional bias for the entire day. Number two, big moves on the day. Number three, early confirmation of my bias in the move between 9.30 and 10. And number four, precise entries with follow through and a good risk to reward. So if you're somebody that's been trading for a long time, you're just not getting anywhere and you're just frustrated with it, you know, you're not alone. There's a lot of people that are doing that. And unfortunately, many people spend years not getting anywhere with their training. You have to make up your mind how serious you are about doing it and how badly do you want it? How badly do you want to be successful? I've taught people that are beginners. I get this question a lot. People that never trade in their life, that's okay. I teach uh, candlesticks at the very, very beginning of the class. We do go over that briefly. 
<laughs> because I use technical analysis. All the points are based on technical analysis. So the Golden Gap course teaches a strategy and how to trade gaps. The course teaches a 26 point rating system to find the best stock to trade each day. The course also teaches you how to play the stock on the day. And the course teaches you chart analysis and technical analysis on an advanced level. This is a great quote from Warren Buffett. Of course, none of us are Warren Buffett. He can hold a stock till it falls all the way down to zero against him and wait it out. He can buy all the dips he wants. That's not normal people, okay? We all have to have an amount of money that we have as a stop that we risk, okay? And it's a real stop, not a fake stop. A stop that you're gonna put in when you get out of the trade and take a loss. Anyways, there's one investment that supersedes all others. If you invest in yourself, it's an investment that should pay off because you should believe in yourself if you're doing this. And again, as I was saying earlier, many people start to trade the market and they lose confidence in themselves. You'll gain that confidence back once you start to consistently make money, even if it's $50 a day, $100 a day. People lose confidence in themselves in the market because they go through a string of losses. You're losing probably because you're doing something that doesn't work. You're trading a strategy or using an indicator that just flat out doesn't work. That's why. And again, buying dips is not a consistent strategy to make money in the market. It only works when whatever you're buying is in a power trend. And that never, never lasts. Okay. But the market wasn't in a power trend since November, to be honest with you. NVIDIA was. NVIDIA was. Anyways, you need to get value out of your education. It's very, very important. And what I do is something that you can learn from me if you want to trade and empower yourself today. So the Golden Gap course is a complete system to use to train. I teach the class once a month. So the class for April is April 27th to 28th. It's a full two day course on how to strategically find, pick and play stocks at our professional bearish gaps. Class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. Class tuition is $69.99. And again, you must email me for sign up forums. The trends class, I'd offer a combo. You get two classes for $74.99, which is nice. Trends is on Tuesday, April 30th. Isn't that beautiful? That's a magnolia tree. I took that on one of my many spring walks. But I'm doing a special. Someone was asking earlier. If you sign up for the Golden Gap course by Sunday, April 14th, you will get the options newsletter subscription free for one year. You will get the trading room free for one year. And you will get the market report subscription free for one year. You must register and pay by Sunday, April 14th. But this is a nice deal because you're going to get all my trades for one entire year, and which is crazy to sound, but it takes into, into April of 2025. It seems like so long from now, but April of 2025 is a long way away. So this gives you plenty of time to learn. Follow me, take the trains. Whether you can be in the room every day, you have access. And again, you can start trading Monday. You can start trading and make money, making money before the class. I've had people already sign up for the April class and were already in the room this week and got the trades. So this is a good offer. You must email me if you want to sign up for this. Again, the class is the end of the month, Saturday and Sunday. And again, it's 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern time. I am in New York. Any questions? I have two minutes here for questions. So glad I didn't lose internet, but I did actually lose internet. <laughs> I just, it, it ended up, I think, holding for the lecture. Any questions from hey. anyone? Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, like, um, I'm here on the East Coast in South Florida. We get storms all the time, so I understand. Oh, I know. Well, you, you probably get tons of rain. It probably rains every day there where you are. <laughs> there's, a, there's a whole season called hurricane season here. <laughs> oh, is it hurricane season now? No, that's in September, No, it's, it? it's not now, though, yeah. fortunately. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for having me. If anybody has any... Oh, here, I have one question from Stan. Stan, Stan. Let me go up to Stan. The training room is not something that people can join without having done the class, Stan. The training room normally, after you take the class, is $39.99 a year, four grand. But the only people who are in the trading room are people who have taken the class. So the Golden Gap course is a prerequisite for joining the room. But again, after the one year, if you want to join, it would be $39.99. The reason is I go over gap ratings. I go over things in the room that you have to have taken the class. So it's privy information. Also, the trade's set up really quickly. You can go to my YouTube and, and, and subscribe to YouTube. You can see the, some of the trading rooms. I think I have Thursday up. The trades happen quickly. You've got to know what to do. But if you're interested in the special or the April class or the special this Sunday, email me at melissathestockswish.com. I appreciate everyone coming today and spending Saturday morning with me. And thank you so much for having me, Traders Corner. Thanks, Melissa. Great presentation.